message from Dr. Wells. We'd like to congratulate you on finding a route to Monarch. Well done. You'll love Monarch. Exotic climate, violent native species, fascinating culture, really. You'll need to speak with Hiram Blythe. He's known as the information broker, and for good reason. If anyone knows where I can find those chemicals, it's Hiram. I need those chemicals to revive the Hope's colonists. They can help us fight back against the board. They can help us set things right. If we don't put a stop to the board, they're going to drive this colony toward a complete societal collapse. You'll see what I mean when you arrive on Monarch. <laughs> no, never. Monarch is a hotbed of political activity. I can't imagine why Hiram set up shop there. Cuisine, perhaps? I certainly wouldn't call it boring, especially if your idea of fun involves navigating a hostile biosphere populated by carnivorous monsters. You'll want to hire the services of a skilled guide. I recommend a hunter by the name of Nioka. Frequents the drinking establishments of Stellar Bay. Very hard to miss. Once you have everything you need, make your way to Hiram Blythe's compound. Come see me in my lab. I'll answer any questions you have. Best of luck. Everyone on the Hope is counting on you. Captain, an unusual wavelength is coming through Monarch's Aether Wave frequencies. The Eternal is in us all. The OSI would have you believe that your place in society, indeed in the universe, is preordained. A man who works in the mines of Hephaestus, coating his lungs in mercury dust for naught but a few bits a night. This fate is set in stone? When he dies young, coughing up black blood, his part in the grand plan? No, I say. Greatness is in everyone. Not just those so fortunate as to have been born into prosperity. That was unexpected and odd. Considering the origins of the transmission, I imagine you may have such an opportunity when we visit Monarch, Captain. I have received a transmission from Roseway, from a Dr. Shaw. Welcome back, Captain. I have received a transmission from Roseway, from a Dr. Shaw, beginning playback now. What? Oh, is this on? Oh, it's on right now. Oh, blast! Hello? I'm trying to reach the captain of the Unreliable. I'll keep this short, lest I get caught. Please return to Roseway as soon as you can. I have an item of great value that you'll be interested in. Now, how do I... How does this blasted thing turn off? Damn, engineers never label these toggles clearly. Is it the... The transmission is complete, Captain. Goodbye. Sanitizing within established radius. Good luck, Captain.
Hold on there. I gotta sign you in. Don't think I've seen you around. That means you must be new to Stellar Bay. You are new here, right? I knew it. See, I made what you call a logical deduction. You must have seen those UDL gunships on your way in. There's only three of them these days. Still, they tend to scare folk off. Wish more folk could say that. Gets awful quiet guarding a landing pad that never gets used. You may not have heard, you being new, but Stellar Bay hardly ever gets awful traffic. Us being cut off by the board and all. Which means I never get to do this part, but I've been practicing, so here goes. On behalf of Monarch Stellar Industries, welcome to Stellar Bay, home of the freshest sal tuna in Halcyon. Please state your name for the records. Swell. There's one for the logs. I'm even going to give you your own entry code. I'm not supposed to do that. It's against procedure, but Mr. Sanjar isn't so strict about the rules here. Besides, I got a lot of empty entries to fill. We don't get ship traffic in town. Only off-worlders who do make it out here are sublight. They got a base in Fallbrook. And thank the stars for them, or we would have run out of Rizzo's Purple Berry Crunch years ago. Oh, that'll just make Mr. Sanjar's day if you tell him. The board makes up lots of nasty stories about raptodons and cannibals and whatnot. But that's all outside our walls. Mostly. Did he just say raptodons and cannibals? I can't wait! Oh, sure. It makes Stellar Bay sound like a rotten place, but it's not so bad. Get a good breeze going, and the sulfur smell mostly covers up the fishy smell. Ah, the nostalgic stench of home. Can't say I miss the day-to-day -day of living in Edgewater. Anyway, Mr. Sanjar's got lots to say on that subject. Kinda goes over my head, though. Mr. Sanjar will be mighty pleased to meet you. If you see him over at headquarters, maybe you could tell him I did a bang-up job of welcoming you? Oh, and if you're headed that way, maybe you could do me a favor? I got this Rizzo's Rangers Toswell poster coming in on the next sublight shipment, signed by the Black Hole himself. Only I haven't heard anything in a while. You think you could check with Celia to see if it's come in? Boss, come on. Black Hole Birdie, the Holemeister, the hack attack. That's Birdie Holcomb, only one of the greatest Tossbell hackers ever. Everyone's heard of him, even on Monarch. We still get some of the games. You've been living in a sulfur pit or something? On account of him being the best hacker who ever played, nothing gets by him. He sucks up every ball that comes his way. Whatever you say, I could talk toss ball for hours. I couldn't really say I'm just a fan of the game. But the fancy collector types say the more people see these things, the less valuable they are. And I figure my poster's been passed around by more than a few people by now. Thanks a bunch! Celia works for Mr. Sanjar in the MSI building next to the bar. She's always there, so you can't miss her.
probably looking for Velma. Watch out. She's in a mood. We're not the best equipped, but scouting for rafts keeps us on our toes. What are the chances of all the times and places we could have been born? Yeah. We're here, light years from Earth, going about our lives. Every time the punch clock peels, a worker earns his meals. What are you talking about? Sorry, I thought you were quoting, it's a wonderful directorate. Laws. Can't a man enjoy the smooth menthol flavor of a stogie slim in peace? What I am doing, ma'am, is enjoying the moment. It's so rare that I can seize one apart from the jabbering masses of this wretched place. This law's forgotten town. Cut off from the rest of the colony. Removed from any culture. I recall when Stellar Bay was a proper board-affiliated town with regular shipments of Auntie Cleo's best and all the cereals. Before Sanjar took over MSI and got us all booted. Yes, free to wallow and squalor together. Free to squabble with the iconoclasts over a raptodon-infested hellhole. Look, you're making me melancholy. Is there something you wanted? We don't get many outsiders. It's slippery, right? On account of its blood, so it's it's sliding all over the place, trying to crawl away. Getting so I can't tell the tell the blood from the mud. But I gotta get in there, get right in that baby rap stomach and dig it out. If so much as a drop of stomach acid got on that medallion, I shit, I don't know what I'd do. Might be I'd hunt every damn wrapped out there. Right. What are you staring? Wait. You ain't from around here. Who are you? Ooh, charmer. Don't get a lot of that around here. Folks mostly grump at me about how I should join the MSI payroll. Nice change of pace. Buy me a drink, will you? What are you doing in Stellar Bay, stranger? Well, 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 well. Let's get down to brass nuts then, shall we? Brass... Wait, that ain't it. Brass rats? Let's... Let's talk business. I'm headed back out there after I sober up. You want a guide sooner than that? You'll have to get me something to clear my head. Outstanding! 
Our dispensary here maintains a stock of, uh, well, I don't rightly know what they are. Steroid or caffeine somethings? Pills. They're very good. I'm cut off for the month on account of needing one just about every damn day. But I'm sure you've got your wily ways. Fetch me one and we'll be all set. Well, they work. We got a deal or what? Wrap mask and canid eyes right here. Hello, stranger. Can I interest you in a raptodon tongue? Or maybe some canid toenails? You look like a woman who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts. Oh, good. Celia hasn't come by in a few days, so I haven't sold much. Oh, thank you for stopping. Everyone acts like nothing's wrong. Like my little boy isn't at risk of being eaten by some vile creature. Please, you have to help me get my little Tucker back. He ran away and is going to get himself killed. Oh, I, I just know a Raptodon is melting him with acid as we speak. Don't you tell me to calm down. I promised my boy I'd protect him for always. But how can I keep him safe if he's run away? He ran out into the wilderness a few days ago. I warned him about the raptodons, mantisaurs and marauders, the toxic sulfur pools and poisonous plants, but he didn't listen. Please, won't you go and find my boy? He's been pining for an adventure, says he's tired of living cooped up behind the walls. But he doesn't understand how dangerous it is out there. I warned him. A raptodon would snap him up first chance it got. I just know one's ripped his arm off and is gnawing on his sweet little fingers. He should have listened to his mama. I promised I'd keep him safe here with me. He's been listening to those awful broadcasts that the iconoclasts put out. I begged Sanjar to put a stop to them, but did he? No! And now I just know my boys run off to Amber Heights. That is, if a Manta Queen hasn't spooled out and eaten his entrails for breakfast already! That old settlement, southwest of Stellar Bay. I don't know which is worse, the thought of my son shacking up with the nutty iconoclasts. Or that he never made it. Sprats could be nesting in his rotting body alongside the road as we speak. Or, or maybe marauders got him, pulled all his teeth out, crushed him into their drugs and made him snort him. Oh, the things that could happen to my sweet baby. Those low-life degenerates leading innocent boys into a life of danger. Oh, they make it sound so exciting. Like it's noble to risk it all out there, fighting for the greater good. Not sure I'm seeing the problem here. You're one of them, aren't you? You should be ashamed of yourself, young man. Just as your mama would be. How noble is it to worry your loved ones? Not at all, I say. But still they preach their sermons of anarchy and rebellion to anyone who listened. If they weren't holed up in Amber Heights, I'd knock them all upside the head. Well, I, I, I guess I can't ask you to leave the town walls for free. It is deathly dangerous out there. I got some bits saved up for a rainy day. I'll give you every last one if you just bring my Tucker back to me. I won't even be mad at him running off. You tell him I, I won't be mad. Thank you. 
Oh, I know he'll be safe now that someone's able to fetch him home. You look for him in Amber Heights, you hear? It's down the road southwest of town. I'm sure he made it that far. I just know it. And if you find any of them iconoclast indoctrinating my boy, you punch them in the mouths. Tell them what I think of them luring little boys away from their mamas. It's immoral. Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? 
Just make sure it's properly logged. I'll note it next to the others, sir. Greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest Saltuna and Halcyon. What can I do for you today? Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well. I just spent most of my paycheck on Raptodon acid. Laws, no! Sometimes it's canid teeth, or mantis warm wings, whatever Sebastian has in stock, really. So I can talk to him, of course. He doesn't get going about much else. Sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff, and some of the neighbors are complaining about the smell. I couldn't! What if he says no? Hey! Maybe you could ask him for me. I, I mean, a no would still be bad, but it won't be quite as embarrassing if you ask. Oh, Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his nose real slowly? I'd better get back to work. He doesn't talk much, but he's got this quiet intensity, you know? Like there's stuff going on inside his head that you have no idea about. Plus, he's got great legs. It's hard to find a man who doesn't skimp on lower body exercises. You think that's what I'm looking for? <laughs> You're funny. Not in Stellar Bay. Everyone else who isn't taken either smells like Saltuna or they're my boss. Besides, a man with a good smile and a proportionate upper to lower body ratio isn't something to pass up. Sorry, sometimes I get carried away. You look like a woman who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts. I don't know. Celia usually buys whatever I have, and Mr. Pickett seemed real interested. So I thought maybe I was onto something. He came to Stellar Bay years ago, just before the board cut us off. Ended up stuck here. He was always real interested in our monsters, Manta Queens especially. Sure, they're real big. Hard to miss them. Who wouldn't be? Now that just sounds like a fancy way to say boring people. Well, I could send you to the same place I sent Mr. Pickett, but I haven't seen him in a few weeks. To tell true, I'm starting to get a bit worried about him. Tell you what, I'll tell you where I sent Mr. Pickett if you promise to look for him. Help him out if he's got himself in trouble. Fair deal? All right then, leave town through the southern gate, the one right here, and head past the abandoned ruins. Last mana queen I saw was in the wilds out that ways could be Mr. Pickett still out there, too. Huh. I haven't seen her in a few days, but I've been meaning to ask her how that wrapped it on acid is working out. I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. Nice of you to say. I like her, too. Wait, I see what's going on. She put you up to this so she could get a discount, hmm? Don't get me wrong, I'd like to give her a discount. She's a real fine lady, always talks nice and slow so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit, on account of no one else having any use for raptodon tongues.
You sound pretty sure. And she is awful nice. Okay, I'll do it. Once her shift ends, we'll go someplace nice. Maybe to Chef Raymond's. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? Okay, but how did he say it? Did he sound excited? Or like he was just agreeing to it? Was he like, yay, a date with Celia. I've secretly been waiting for this. Or was it more, sure, I don't have anything else going on. Not to worry. If I never buy another Raptodon tongue, it'll be too soon. Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do and Mr. Nandi's giving me that back to work look. Anyhow, thank you. Thanks again for setting me up with Sebastian. Is there anything else I can help you with? You know, sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man, because I told him to stop bothering me about it a week ago. I still don't know anything about it, but if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. She's in the warehouse. But I'll warn you, Grim wore her patience thin a long time ago. Well, new business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. Did you hear that power play, Celia? They don't make them like this anymore in Halcyon. I only hope you don't judge me by my handshake. Now, what business brings you here? What a charming notion. One doesn't meet many free spirits in Halcyon. Not outside Tartarus prison, anyway. Forgive me, I'd be positively enraptured. Only, I take it this means you aren't here for Saltuna. Now, now, there's no need to humor me. I'm used to this particular letdown. I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but... It seems we're back to the drawing board. Because he's scared to go it alone. You need the board to hold your hand and tell you everything's gonna be okay. Ain't that right? Surviving alone isn't as easy as it looks. Thanks to the so-called Hazard Clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. now we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. Yes, freedom is a tempting ideal, but a rather costly paramour. Can't imagine why you'd sneer at the notion of a free colony. Could it be because you're an agent of the establishment? I used to be young and idealistic too, but you can't run a city on high-minded ideals. Exactly. Intellectualism fuels the train to mankind's future, but the tracks the train runs on are forged from practicality. Sounds like something out of the chairman's own notes, Vic. Yes, it's as though the good vicar has plucked the very words from my brain. I have people to look after. I need to be practical. That's why Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. Are you out of your mind? You can't just go crawling back to your old masters. But we can't continue to subsist like this, either. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, 
then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. It's true, our Celia is an alarmingly competent middle manager. At any other company, she'd be wasted in data entry. The plan she refers to is a two-pronged approach, and the first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. Not long, but the devil is always in the details. And the salient detail here is a Bolt 52 cartridge. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. I was starting to get bored listening to you, until you said the phrase, extremely powerful ordinance. It is quite the rush. I'll need to gather some supplemental materials, but I mustn't get ahead of myself. You do tend to do that. The Bolt 52 will be in the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in. And these days, it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Do be careful. I've lost more than a few people to marauders and raptodons out there. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some... dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. What can I do for you? I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. What else can I do for you? Then it's good that I keep such meticulous notes. I've asked myself the same thing many times, especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. It's true, the board has treated us unfairly, but I'd always envisioned that things could be different. For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2, but back then it was known as Terra 1. Really? I always thought they were refreshingly straightforward names. After all, the whole point of terraforming was to make them Earth-like. Here, though, the results were... mixed. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. Our leadership at the time certainly wanted to. And how did that work out? Most regard Monarch as a lost cause. But there were others of us who saw an opportunity. The chance to improve working hours and conditions, to reform MSI from the ground up. It's humane, but it's also good business sense. Exhausted, sick, and malnourished workers are not productive workers. Even a cursory review of the data bears that out. Anyway, we learned of a loophole in the corporate bylaws that would allow MSI to claim ownership of the entire planet once the other corporations pulled out, creating the perfect environment for us to enact these new reforms. Hmm? Oh, well, there were surely other junior executives with more... open minds, though none of them had the temperament to handle the paperwork. But I was keeping my tone flat and maintaining eye contact. You weren't supposed to notice I was avoiding the subject. This is why you've never been good with presentation, sir. <sighs> Very well. Many, many years ago, Graham Bryant and I used to be... collaborators. Of sorts. Indeed. For all the good it did. 
MSI's then leadership wasn't enthusiastic. They insisted we'd be relocating to Terra 2 along with everyone else. Yes, some of us stayed behind, and as the most senior executive remaining, I ended up in charge of what was left of MSI. I moved forward with our planned reforms, as well as our strategy to assume ownership of the planet. Yet not long after I renamed it Monarch, the other corporations dislodged us from the board and began an official campaign to paint us as lawless savages. But we weren't trying to. Everything we did was legal and above board. We followed their rules, and yet they still found reasons to declare us outlaws. Your first mistake was expecting the board to cut you a fair deal. I understand the sentiment, but if we can't rely on some sort of framework, then what do we have? I do think there's something useful in a governing body like the board. Something that keeps us from anarchy, but I dearly wish it functioned differently. Why wouldn't anyone? They own nearly all the resources and infrastructure in Halcyon. Yeah, and once you go back to him, they'll own your dignity too. Without the board, chaos would overtake the system. Working within the established order isn't a principle to snub one's nose at, Captain. To be on the board is to be part of the colonial community, and being cut off means slow strangulation. I'm not a man to put pride before progress. If membership on the board can ease our hardships and provide us with opportunities, then that's the path I mean to pursue. Besides, I'm hopeful that additional leverage on our part will allow us a more equitable relationship. Oh, believe me, I've learned that much. But I'm also not going to leave MSI at a disadvantage. My hope is to maintain the reforms we've managed here, and who knows? Perhaps once we're restored, we could spread them to other corporations. It's a legal provision that gives the board the authority to cordon off any planet or location that it deems dangerous. A necessary evil for the greater good of society. That's exactly how the board describes it. Yes. Making all of MSI criminals in the board's eyes. Rather hard to run a business that way. As far as I'm concerned, the less said about Graham, the better. Graham seemed like a reasonable man years ago. and We both agreed that MSI's treatment of its workers was untenable. I thought reforms would be enough. I didn't realize you wanted to abolish the corporate system entirely. What can I do for you? Probably looking for Velma. Watch out.
Look, you can tell Catherine the new shipment will be ready when it's ready, all right? She's welcome to come up here and pack boxes herself if she's in such a hurry. Did she now? Well, I can see I was mistaken. Because if Catherine really had sent you, there'd be a lot more expletives in your message. I hope you can forgive my temper. This job has been running me ragged lately. First, my autoloader foreman stages a walkout, and now my chief pescatological health manager is missing. Braxton. He's in charge of getting the fish fat, but also making sure they don't get too many tumors. He's a real wizard with pharmaceuticals, but he has creative notions of working hours. Comes with living in a free colony, I guess. We're not keen on rules for rules sake around here. Means Braxton skips work sometimes, but it also means no company boss is telling me when I can take a shit. These MSI types are living the dream. Since you don't seem to be constrained yourself, maybe you could check up on him. He lives in the apartments. Tell him Velma said to get his lazy ass down here, or she might start noticing those extra drugs he's been taking from supply. Something else on your mind? Caleb Herrick runs the autoloader operators. He thinks I don't pay them enough for flipping switches and turning dials. He and his whole crew walked out. Say they won't come back unless I pay them more. Because we've got a budget, all right? And in case you haven't noticed, MSI doesn't exactly have a lot of spare bits on hand. Not on Monarch. Sanjar threw out the old work mandates and penalties. Sure, until your workers start making ridiculous demands. You mind slapping him around a little while you're at it? I'm joking. Mostly. Unless you can do it without hurting his job performance. If you can find a way to get him back to work, I'll make it worth your while. Check the Yacht Club. He's usually there. Sublight boss out of Fallbrook. Handles most goods that come in or out of Cellar Bay. Has a mouth like a ground zig spacer. Stealing's such a nasty word. Let's call it skimming. And yeah, let's just say I've noticed the sterile biotics we use for the fish would get used a little faster on Braxton shifts. We're not like those corporate towns where you get fined for sleeping on the wrong side of the bed. Besides, the Spacer's Choice stuff we use is cheap enough. And Braxton knows how to get the salt tuna, fat and mostly tumor free. Unless you're here to tell me he's agreed to do his job again, I've got nothing to say. Hard workers? They turn dials and flip switches. The machines do all the actual work. Caleb and his crew have it better than anyone else around here, I'll tell you that much. I don't have the bits for it, plain and simple. Besides, if I make an exception for him, I gotta do the same for everyone. She's principled, in at least this area. I will begrudgingly give her that. Thank you. I think. If Caleb wants to keep this job, he'd better get back to it. I'm about ready to hire sublight contractors at this rate. For running me ragged while he takes an extended leave at the bar? Not on your life. Maybe so, but I bet you Caleb runs out of bits first. Then you'll have to come back. He says he's got a stash to tide his crew over. Could be he's all talk. But if the money's real, I bet you he keeps it at home, near the diner. Fine by me. This again? I swear, this is the last time I contract for any special requests. You can tell Grim his poster came in. You can also tell him I got a better offer for it. So now it's going to Nell. That about cover it? No. 
I paid Sublight for it, so it's mine. And when Nell pays me for it, it'll be hers. Grimm may have asked for the poster, but it's not his until I take his money. It's staying locked up in my office until Nell shows with her money. She runs the bedding parlor across the way. Nice professional lady. She asked me about the poster once. Just once. Made a real generous offer, too. I don't have time for Grimm, even when I'm not working doubles. Sure can, if you want to pay me more than Nell's offering. Sure, and once you finish helping me, then we can talk about the poster. Fine by me. Missing out of sorts to you. She's always cranky. No, I mean more than usual. Wouldn't know. I made it a point to stay out of her way. Whatever you do, don't mention Tossball to Isaac. You'll never hear the end of it. You know, I haven't seen him in a while. It's not been an hour long rant about Morphe <gasps> You startled me! Don't sneak up on a person like that, huh? Braxton. I've never even heard of a Braxton. Got nothing for you, sorry. Oh, in that case, he told me he was delivering to this house in the ruins south of town. Whole family had fallen sick and he had some meds on hand. So maybe look for him there? You wanna know what I think? This Braxton fella threw away the trappings of society and joined a pack of wild raptodons. Murder? Hey, is this the part where we go hunting for clues? What a gruesome way to die. So Vic, what was it like in prison? I don't like to talk about it.
Was it? Run by Spacer's choice? What part of I don't like to talk about it do you not understand? Is it the don't? Because it can't be the talk. I bet it was a Spacer's choice prison. Did you taste the freedom? It baffles me why the captain puts up with your willful idiocy, Mr. Millstone. Well done. Impressive, as always. New face, huh? You from Offworld? A ship captain? Well, I'll be. Here, let me buy you a drink. Consider it an MSI welcome. Why don't you grab a chair, sit a spell and revel with us? Me and my friends have taken our destiny into our own hands. We're untethered, free of responsibility and worldly cares. Well, as long as we don't run out of bits. But until the windfall's gone, we're riding high. See, we just walked out on our work. Had enough, we did. So now we're striking. I don't see how. When Sanjar took over MSI, he tossed all the old corporate rules. We ain't required no more to work whatever job the company demands. Our supervisor, Velma, goes on and on about quarterly profits and meeting quotas. But that ain't what Sanjar promised us. Velma refuses to negotiate, so we're refusing to work. We won't go back until she agrees to pay us fair and proper. Us on Monarch, we're free from the board, you know? We have the right to lobby for better hours and pay. Sure thing. What did you want to discuss? Nope. I'm calling her bluff. If she wants to threaten us, we'll see how she likes it when Sanjar finds out she gave Sublight even more dominion in Stellar Bay. What? Something happened to our stashed bit carts? But I hid it so careful. No one saw me put the lockbox on my balcony. No one goes up there but me. We must be dealing with some sort of criminal mastermind. Well, if we can't afford to skip work, we ain't got no leverage. Space me, but good. I guess you ought to tell Velma we're coming back to work. I wonder sometimes what they're doing on other colonies. Uh-huh. Think they're watching the same serial? Ooh, 
you're the new face. Wow, you must be up on all the latest tossball games. So who do you follow? Wait, don't tell me. You look like a Hammersmith Thunder fan. No, Glacial Age Mammoths. Aren't they just? When I get to worrying about the marauders outside, the raptodons chewing at the walls, I just turn my transceiver up to drown it all out. Most of the time it's static on account of the frequency being clogged up, but sometimes it's toss ball. You get to listen to games all day? Stellar Bay really is a paradise. It's pretty swell, but it's a whole lot better with company. Say, I don't think I've seen you before, and I'd remember that face. I'll try not to be a stranger then. My name's Felix, by the way. You should stop by more often. The games are always better when you've got someone to celebrate with. Sounds like a good time. I wouldn't mind bringing a couple drinks and settling in for the pennant match. Look at me, getting carried away again. So, what can I do for you? Graham's always filling the airwaves with this propaganda. Like it's done him any good. All it means is the tossball games get to us in fragments. Makes him real hard to watch. Poor Isaac. I was wondering why I hadn't seen him in a few days. I'd really like to help. Isaac was a sweet fellow, even if he did have terrible teeth. They were pretty distinct. Monarch doesn't exactly have a thriving dental industry, and Isaac seemed to get stuck in all sorts of bad habits, dietary and otherwise. Sometimes he'd drink Purpleberry Punch by the leader, other times he'd keep betting on a losing team, started owing the wrong people money. I don't know for sure, but I saw Elijah and his buddies pushing Isaac around. They're hooligans from Fallbrook. They sweep into town, drop supplies off behind the warehouse, and spend the rest of their stay getting rowdy over tossball games. They usually loiter in the alley behind the yacht club. They're not allowed in the bar anymore. I bet you anything Isaac ran into trouble with one of them. Mr. Sanjar will be pleased to hear about it when you're done. I know he gets fed up with the Fallbrook bullies, but there's not much he can do. Sounds like wrapped in here. Oh, it does work. I brought some muscles back. You know, Vic, you're starcher than a spectrum potato, but you got a mean left hook, and I respect that. Thanks, I think. Guess I could give you some pointers. Yeah? All right, let's hear it. Well, most significantly. Aside from how you form and angle your fist, is that you cannot just punch with your arm. You must turn your upper body into it to generate any real force. That sounds real complicated. I think I'll stick with the Millstone Special, which is when I kick a jackass square in the chest. Hey, what are you doing here? This is our secret alley. Berta already pissed by those crates to market. Listen, that purple tooth twerp had it coming. Not that anyone has proof. And not that it's any of your business. Oh yeah? What are you saying exactly? Wow. Most of the pencil pushers around here cave as soon as you look at them funny. Fine. We're going. This ain't worth it.
a fine day for business, isn't it? Anyway, what can I do for you? But that's terrible. What happened? I'm glad to hear you've dealt with them. They've been causing quite a bit of trouble around town. I've been consumed with other matters of late, but I would have dealt with them. Eventually. It really was on my to-do list. Still, your intervention in the matter is much appreciated. Please consider this payment for your services. Hold on to your hats, children. This ride is about to get ugly. We gotta go exploring. I wanna see some savages.
that again? I wonder what secrets these ruins contain. Explorers... Visitor? What an unexpected surprise! Please, come in! Come in! We're armed the teeth? What's he gonna do? Kill us with generosity? That's the spirit. Now come in! Make yourselves comfortable! I'm afraid we don't get many visitors out here. The Raptodons and Marauders scare off all but the boldest. And if you've braved them, you must be exhausted. Why don't you stay for dinner? I'm sure I would remember something like that. Now, quit fretting yourself about that. Make yourself at home. Dinner's almost ready. I think I just lost my appetite. What a pleasant surprise. And just when I was beginning to fear we'd seen the last of good company for a spell. Yet the Eternal provides, does it not? Only if you give yourself over to the plan, Martha. May I call you Martha? By all means, just make yourself comfortable. Company is always a reason for cheer. The Eternal does not desire that we huddle and hide, crowded in by walls. We all share the spark of the Divine, and we were made to spread it across the stars. Out here, we are free. And even apart from society, the universe provides for us, as your being here proves. Just that your presence here is a gift to us, and one that we don't take for granted. Look at me, prattling on as if this gravy is going to cook itself. Why don't you run along until we are ready for dinner? Oh, hello there. You come for... for, uh, dinner? Sorry, I'm not real good with, um, uh, names. It just gets hard to remember things. I recall moments, feelings, but the details slip. Other times it's like there's fog. I... Sorry, have we talked about this before? That's nice of you. I usually feel better after I eat. Mama said dinner's almost ready, huh?
Hey, what are you doing in my room? Liar. You're trying to steal the last of my rocket candies, aren't you? The ones that come in a bottle with a rocket ship on it, like the other man used to bring. I'm not telling you. Space, there's choice pills, they cure all your ills. I thought I'd seen the worst of humanity before. I am so glad I skipped lunch. What's this? You're tracking blood into the kitchen. Oh dear. You've been nosy, haven't you? Quickly, my dear. She's getting agitated. We can't let the meat spoil. Don't worry. We'll make this quick. You got a Yes, these people deserved much, much worse.
your survival. Coming.
here and a mana queen showed up, then wrapped it on. It was a void blasted mess. I ran in here and um now the door's locked. Little help? It's easier than it sounds, alright? Next time you get chased by Raptodons, you let me know the rationality of your decisions. Phew. Thanks, lady. My buddy had a key, but I ain't heard him in a while. He locked me in here and took off. Probably got munched. So I'll look for a dead guy, I guess. Or a rat. Maybe it's in a rat belly. Gross. Sure. Beats not answering questions. Huxley! I'm an Iconoclast runner. The Iconoclast runner. Fast as we've got. Ain't a raptodon on this void forsaken hellhole that can catch me. I'm... Uh, I'm... <sighs> Sorry. Put me in a tiny room like this and I'm liable to flip. Not keen on tight spaces, you know? Oh, that'd be my people. Graham and Zora and Milton and... I really miss them. You gonna let me out of here? I want to get back to Amber Heights. My buddy locked me in here. I told you that. It was for my safekeeping, on account of raptodons wanting to munch on my head. But, I mean, okay, yes, fine. I get myself into sticky situations. It's just part of the life, all right? Sometimes you gotta hide in a trash can so you don't get eaten by monsters. Neither was I. Who'd hide in a trash can? Gross. Probably. I don't know. When I try to read things, my mind gets to wandering about all the things I could be doing instead. Get me out of here! Oh, much obliged. Ah, phew. Thank you so much. It was getting all stuffy in there, and I was getting a mite lightheaded, and I think maybe I was gonna die. Now I'm out here, and I'm headed back to Amber Heights. Oh, sure, I'm a runner. I'm used to getting all dizzy, and hey, who's your identical, slightly blurry friend? Thanks a lot, lady.
always wanted to visit Stellar Bay. Taking the sights, the sounds, the... Wait, what's that smell? The trick is not to breathe through your nose. I hear those rich people in Byzantium pay a handsome bit for rap musk. Bet they also <laughs> I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna guts. That he's got his load on and I'm stuck covering his shift? That's... Wow. I sure feel like an ass now. Yeah, I wouldn't wish that on Catherine herself. Still, it's good to know what happened to him. And that I ought to start looking for a replacement. Something else on your mind? You knocked any sense into him yet? Funny how that works out. Thanks for your help. You've gotten me out of a tight spot here. Take this for your efforts. Honest work deserves honest pay. Sure can. If you want to pay me more than Nell's offering. Fair enough. The damn thing's been a headache anyway. Take the poster then. And if I never hear another word about it, it'll be too soon. Have you had time to check on that poster yet? I keep wondering if it's come in. Sorry, I just get so excited and I always feel like I miss everything that happens in town while I'm up here. Would you look at that? The Rizzo's logo is nice and bright and you can still smell the ink on Mr. Holcomb's signature. I can't thank you enough. Still, you can have the bits I was going to spend at the bar this week. And you know what? Take my old tossball blocker, too. Never get the chance to use it these days.
How does it feel? How does what feel? Serving an instrument of corporate supremacy. Let me hazard a guess. You're talking about the church. Isn't it true the OSI is just a cog in the machine of oppression? I'm glad you're asking questions, Felix. Curiosity is the foundation of the scientician faith. Don't try and convert me, preacher. And you should know, you're getting excellent reviews from across the company. What can I do for you? You weren't supposed to look. I asked you to delete it. I didn't mean for any harm to come to you. This has been my albatross. The great shame of my career. I give MSI everything. My work, my youth, my left kidney, and for years, I was a joke to them. Oh, one of the executives required a transplant. I thought volunteering to donate might improve my prospects. Apparently not. In charge of a scrap heap of a city. Abandoned by the board and surviving only through the hypocrisy of our trading partners. I hadn't thought of it that way. But perhaps there's something to that. Thank you for that. Or was there something else? Oh, yes. I'm going to be up all night with this. All those blanks waiting to be filled, boxes waiting to be ticked. Try to control yourself, sir. Have you any idea how powerful this is? Corporations have been toppled with less. But that's exactly what this is. The world isn't changed with guns and speeches, much as Graham and his followers would like to think, but rather with meticulous documentation. And the dissemination of the proper ideals and information to those in the highest echelon of society. Hearing that caused me physical pain. On the contrary, I would say good documentation is for everyone. And the bill of liquidation slash transfer form 52 is one of the most formidable pieces of data entry in all of Halcyon. One false stroke can invalidate the entire document. It's true. One of the old execs gave herself a stroke trying to fill out the exemption section. For our part, a bill of liquidation slash transfer form 52 will protect our holdings on Monarch by temporarily assigning them to a pass-through entity once we drop our bomb on the board. Wait, we're dropping a bomb on the board? Sort of. Really, we're just going to blackmail them into offering us a seat at the table. But really, whatever gets you excited about the idea, it's definitely a firm middle finger. That's what I like to hear. I have reason to believe that one of the other corporations is operating on Monarch, illegally and in secret. The board just can't let Monarch go, huh? If we can find proof, I can use that as leverage to... Encourage certain powers that be to accept our Bolt 52 and reinstate us on the board. You really think so? I admit I've been hatching this scheme for quite some time. I just needed someone capable to help me carry it out. If someone is operating here, then Catherine's almost certainly supplying them out of Fallbrook. Perhaps she could be convinced to tell you where they are. That's part of the problem. She has certain ambitions for Stellar Bay, and I fear my asking her would give her the leverage she's been looking for. Don't get yourself worked up, sir. It's perfectly natural to have a healthy fear of her. We really don't need to discuss this now, Celia.
Once you, uh, subtly work out where this corporate facility might be, bring back proof of its operation. Maybe some nice letterhead. Or someone working there. That would do it. A foolproof plan if I ever heard one. I'll leave the execution to you. Mr. Millstone, you seem like a young man who could use some direction in your life. Is this about me ending up in the wrong bunk? Because I swear I wasn't that drunk. The hallway's disorienting. Son, you can always come to me for spiritual guidance. But not between 2 and 4 a.m. Also, I am really sorry about your floor. Forget I broached the topic. Let's just pretend last night didn't happen. You know what your problem is, Vic? Other than being called Vic? You scientists got no imagination. That's your problem. I've imagined you being quiet. It was a nice daydream. Everything always goes according to plan, right? Ain't like that what scripture tells you? Scripture also tells us to exercise patience in the presence of the young and the foolish. But I repeat myself.
Hey, Velma, I got your caffeinoid pills. 